Hey everyone, Isabel Fox here and in today's lesson I'm going to teach you how to overcome negativity in the industry and how to become not just a weapon but a dangerous weapon of positivity. So far in our lessons we have already covered a multitude of topics, mostly relating to business and romantic life working in the sex industry. However, there's a whole other area we haven't delved into yet which is that of your personal life. When you enter the sex industry, there are a number of things that will change and challenges that you'll be faced with within your personal life. And one of the greatest challenges of working within the sex industry is the negativity that you will face from those around you, from both those outside the industry, sometimes within the industry from other workers themselves, and from general society as a whole. It wasn't until I became a sex worker that I started to notice some of the subtle negativities that were all around me relating to sex work, even just being the butt of dead hooker jokes in movies. So when you first enter the industry, not only are you dealing with all of these other challenges, but this is one that you will probably continue to face time after time. So if you don't learn tactics for managing and overcoming this, your time in the industry will be a constant miserable struggle oftentimes regardless of your actual personal experience with the job, and you will be pushed out. A lot of workers that I know end up getting pushed out of the industry for reasons totally unrelated to how they feel about the actual job and often for things surrounding it. So today I wanna to discuss with you practical steps that you can take to overcome this so that you can learn to kick those harmful naysayers to the curb and become a dangerous weapon of not just positivity but of continual progressive success. So we're going to cover this in three stages. Stage one is to take complete responsibility for yourself and for your life. Working in the industry is a choice and just like anything else in life, it comes with its own set of pros and cons. So as you enter the industry, you need to be realistic about what those are, and you need to accept responsibility for that choice in its entirety. So often throughout my career, I have felt frustrated by some of the issues that I've dealt with in my romantic life. And regardless of how I feel about those things, whether it may be fair or not, when you step into the industry, it is just a reality that there are certain things that will be harder for you. There are also a lot of things that will be really positive. For instance, the flexibility and the independence that you have and the amount of money that you have the opportunity to make. But you cannot have your cake and eat it too. A good analogy for this is those who become celebrities. You cannot become a celebrity without understanding that you will have less privacy, that you will be subjected to more public judgment, and to step into that thinking that you won't face those things is naive. Does that mean that it's fair? No, but it does mean that it's just a part of the package. So when you face these challenges, one of the first things you need to realize is that this is unfortunately right now just a part of the job. However, you can actually flip this as well. Every time I hear somebody say something negative about sex work or the sex industry, I literally just see dollar signs because it is their stigma that makes our job more valuable and means that we can charge more. So I actually am, am in some ways thankful for it at times. So that's a great tactic that you can use to combat that. No matter what you do in your life, there will be naysayers who will criticize you. And the sex industry is no different. I've worked in many different fields in my life and there's always been somebody who has something negative to say. Even the most upstanding of jobs, take police officers for example, they're out there doing something really good for the community that is really hard work every day and yet there are plenty of people who have lots of negative things to say. So if you spend your life worrying about what other people have to say about your choices, you're going to be one miserable person. So just recognize that the sex industry is not unique in this way. No matter what you do, somebody will have something negative to say about you. Blaming others, even when they're wrong, does not serve you. So I hear a lot of this in the industry, a lot of talk about how we're victims and people treat us badly and blah, blah, blah. That may be true. However, that sort of dialogue doesn't actually help you. It doesn't help you to overcome those challenges and become stronger and smarter so that you can combat them. That's why the first thing I tell people is that they have to take responsibility for the choices they have made, even when other, pe when other people are putting you down. So remember that blaming other people doesn't actually help you. It only helps you to linger in the problem, which is not what you want to be doing. You cannot control the thoughts and actions of others. 
Many of us like to focus on trying to change the opinions of other people. That as well is generally not going to serve you. Think about how you feel when somebody tries to change your thoughts and actions. You probably don't like it and you're going to be pretty defensive. Yes, there is an angle to this where you can be open-minded and take feedback. However, you don't want to spend your time trying to change what other people think about what you're doing. You want to spend your time thinking about how you can move forward. So don't waste your energy doing this and just focus on yourself. Lastly is take responsibility for your own emotions and actions. And I say this to all the people that I work with. If you are adult enough to make the decision to work within the industry, then you need to be adult enough to develop a certain amount of emotional discipline. Can it be hurtful when somebody says something negative about you? Yes, but you have total control over whether or not you actually react to that. And this is a skill, just like anything else, that you can develop over time. And we're actually going to delve into in the next page how you can do that. So as a summary, take complete responsibility for yourself, for your life, and for your choice to work within the industry. And remember that if there comes a day where you realize that sex work isn't for you, that's totally okay too. There are lots of industries that I have tried that I've found out weren't really the right thing for me. And there's nothing wrong with moving on and finding something that you're better suited to. Number two, build your own impenetrable force field around yourself. I listen to a lot of Joe Rogan interviews because they're really interesting and informative. He did one recently with Kevin Hart. And Kevin Hart was talking about how he combats negativity. And this was the perfect way that he described it, is that he said he creates for himself an impenetrable force field so that he can't be affected by what other people have to say. Then he talked about how he fills that force field with all the people that he loves, all the people that support him and uplift him. So I want to break this down for you. This is going to be your most powerful weapon, your defensive impenetrable force field. A great analogy for this is to imagine that you are a warrior going into battle and you have different layers of protection around you. So firstly, you might have your fellow comrades fighting in arms. Then you'll have your protective shield. Then you'll have your attacking weapons. Then you're going to be wearing some body armor. You're going to have a skill set that is going to allow you to fight against people who are battling you. And lastly, internally, you're going to have the courage to actually go out there and do that. That's the final layer. So your own personal impenetrable force field is something that you can develop over time and has its own particular set of layers similar to the one that I've just described to you of a warrior. So I'm going to break all of these layers down to you step by step. And we're going to start from the outside so that you can see exactly how you can go about creating this impenetrable force field which will ultimately help you combat negativity. This can be challenging to create. So your outermost external layer, that's going to be the easiest to cultivate, yet the least effective. So if you think about that warrior, the comrades in arms, he's got his people around him. And to a certain degree, once somebody breaks through that layer, then he has to focus on himself again. So think about your outermost layer as the easiest one, and that's generally step one, where I tell people to begin their focus first. And then as you go down into the deeper layers, they're going to be harder to cultivate, yet more effective. So work from the outside in, focus on developing and solidifying each layer in sequence, get good at it, get confident, and then move on to the next one. So the six layers that I've broken this down into are, number one, feed your brain good quality knowledge food. Number two, get moving every day. Number three, form connections with people who embody the values you want to hold. Number four, create and invest in positive and reliable anchors of support. Five, surround yourself with like-minded people and discard the bad to the best of your ability. And lastly, number six, develop self-worth and become your own anchor. So let's break all of these down and go into them in detail. I'm going to begin with a case study, Jane, and I'm going to talk about the sort of advice that I would give to Jane, which is a typical sex worker working in our industry, to how she might go about improving her life by using this impenetrable force field. So let's look at an average sex worker, and this is a situation that I come up against all the time. I used to be in a very similar situation to Jane before myself, and I've worked with many girls who come to me in this position. 
So let's go through a brief overview of what Jane's life is like. Jane is a sex worker and works as a private escort. She once worked in a parlor or a brothel and decided to leave that sort of work. Now, aside from the occasional booking with a doubles partner and transient work-based friendships with one or two former colleagues, probably that she met at the brothel, no one in Jane's life knows that she works, so she's pretty alone. Her family would either disown her or disapprove strongly if they found out she was working, which is the case for most people, however, not all people. Her close friends would never understand her line of work, so she has nobody to talk to about what she's doing. She's lying to everyone around her all the time. She's lonely, depressed, and isolated. She's on the brink of leaving the job she wants to do because it's all becoming too much for her. So even though Jane, Jane enjoys her daily work, she's actually starting to think that, you know what, I'm not cut out for this because of everything that's involved outside of the job. So let's go through what Jane could do to go about improving her life. Layer one, feed your brain good quality knowledge food. Read, listen, or watch material that is positive, uplifting, and educational. Select from sources around you, from people who are living the kind of life you want to be living and who are successful and positive in the way you desire to be. So when I was in Jane's position, the first thing I did, aside from just going out and finding a whole new group of friends immediately, which is pretty hard work and pretty daunting when you're in this position, was I just started just deciding to change what I was putting into my brain. So I would select positive, uplifting stuff from people who I really admired and wanted to be like. And this sort of information now is really easily accessible. So think people like Tony Robbins, people like Oprah, who have gone about changing their lives and who have helped other people do it along the way. Now, why I like this and why it works is that it is easily and freely accessible at any time. That means you can literally jump online, you can go onto your phone, you can walk into a bookstore, you can order a book to you, you can download this stuff free. It is so easily accessible at any time, especially in our modern day era. It's also super low commitment. So you don't have to reach out to anybody, which can be daunting at first. You don't have to pay any money. You don't have to sign up to anything. You don't have to make any commitment of any kind. You can pick it up and put it down whenever it suits you. It requires no input from or interaction with others. So you don't need anybody else to even know about it at first to give you any sort of negative feedback about it. You can just do it by yourself. And it is the first step to giving you access to a world of positivity that you otherwise may not have known even existed. When times are dark, it kind of seems like times will always be dark. So sometimes all you need is to just actually acknowledge and see that there is some light to help get you on your way. All right, layer two, assuming you've conquered layer one and you're starting to feed your brain good quality information, is you want to get moving every day. This might be difficult at first, so just start small. If you're somebody who is fairly inactive, which is what I used to be like back when I was pretty young, I found the idea of exercising really daunting. So I just used to do 10 minutes of a little weight training circuit every second day. And that was better than trying to take a massive action for just one day, getting overwhelmed and burnt out and then never doing it again. When you start to feel better physically, the mind will follow and getting in better shape will help your income to grow. The industry that we're working in is very much to do with visual attractiveness. So if you begin to look better, you'll probably find that your business improves. Now, guys, this really does work. Countless studies have shown the effect that physical movement has on emotional and physical health and longevity. It may sound a little cliched and a little like, please, as if going for a walk every day is going to make me feel better, but you actually just need to try it because it really will. Layer three is to form connections with people who embody the values you want to hold. So at this point in your life, you perhaps are not surrounded by the most positive people. You might be surrounded by people who have totally different values to you. If you're working in a brothel, you might be in a really toxic sort of negative environment where people are also really down, also negative and very competitive against you. So an immediate overhaul of your entire circle of friends and acquaintances will probably be difficult. That's why I recommend that you start small. And this could actually be inside or outside the industry. So we're talking about your overall life here. Not everything has to be totally exactly just related to the industry. Sometimes you can work on things outside of the industry before you actually start improving your life inside it as well. So there are lots of different things you can do here. 
there's an endless list of options. You can join select Facebook groups. You can go to a gym full of positive people. You can get involved in a meetup group. There are so many different ways to just form connections with people that you don't know at this time. There are actually clubs related to doing this and dedicated to it. So you just need to get creative and things like the Facebook groups and online are a really low level way to do it to begin with, which is really good for just breaking the ice. You can't expect to just change your life in one huge step. You need to start breaking it down. You need to start opening doors to actually allow the progression of larger doors to open and just trust that they will. It's a small, seemingly inconsequential actions done consistently over time that lead to the massive breakthroughs. Now I'm going to read that again. It is the small, seemingly inconsequential actions done consistently over time that lead to the massive breakthroughs. And this applies to most areas of your life. My business didn't become successful till I started to doing small things every day to take steps in that direction. My relationship with my partner wasn't a success until we started working on it in just a small way every day. Your physique won't improve unless you start doing small things every day. And this area of your life is the same. Layer four. Now you want to create and invest in positive and reliable anchors of support. So obviously the ultimate goal, which is going to be layer six, is to become your own master anchor of support where you don't need to rely on other people and you can really just always know that you're going to be there to support yourself. However, that's a difficult point to get to. So until you can get to that point, you want to focus instead on investing in the people or areas of your life that are most stable and supportive. So if you have a crazy erratic boyfriend, you probably do not want to try and invest your energy and time in him as your anchor of support. You need to go elsewhere. This could be family. Even if they don't know what you do, if they are stable and reliable for you at this time, it is better that you invest in that stability than have nothing at all. This might be a close friend. It could be a mentor. It could be your partner. Or it might be a community that you're involved in. You might be part of a gym or say a boxing club where you know the people are always there for you, will always be there at the end of the day for your training session, and you're better off investing your energy in that sort of stability at first. When times are tough, you can draw on that strength from that support, from that source to help you get through. And you'll need to use this until you get strong enough to do it yourself. So if you don't already have one, you may need to go and create it. And you can even actually start seeing a therapist to help you. It is better to pay somebody than to have nobody at all. Somebody who you know will turn up, who will listen to you, who will be calm and have a good perspective and just be there for you when you need it. So create and invest in positive and reliable anchors of support. Layer five is surround yourself with like-minded people and discard the bad to the best of your ability. So obviously it's difficult to discard your family. Your family may be a source of great grief for you. You might not be able to discard them, but you probably can take a step away from them. And if that's better for you, then that's probably a good idea. And this is when you need to start being really selective about who you let into your life. We've all heard the old cliche, though again, it is very true. You are the five people you spend the most time with. Listen to any successful person and you will probably hear them say this at some point. If you want to be a sex worker, don't spend time with people who think that sex work is wrong because that is completely unhelpful to you. If you want to be positive and successful and ambitious, don't spend time with people who are negative, who aren't progressive, and who don't care about where their life is going. So once you've come up to layer five, this is a time when you need to push yourself to do these things. And it can be hard at first, so you might just need to take one step at a time. It might mean going out with that negative group of friends once a month instead of twice a month. And that is certainly better than seeing them frequently. Layer six, the last final and most important layer is to develop self-worth and become your own anchor. At the core, you want to be your own greatest support system and cheerleader. Even with a great support system and network of people around you, ultimately you want to be able to rely on yourself first and foremost. And you want to develop the mantra, and this is my personal favorite mantra that I was taught growing up, is no matter what life throws at me, I can and will handle it. Look to others around you who have already developed the skill and learn from them. 
When you can truly do this, the opinions of others will rock you less. So once you have your impenetrable force field, you can watch how the negativity of others bounces off you. And as it becomes stronger and casts a wider light, you won't even notice that it's coming at you at all. And here is the badass girl from The Incredibles with her super impenetrable force field around her. And you'll notice that this is probably going to take some time, but once you're able to do it, those negative things that you hear other people say, you won't even realize that they're saying it to you. It'll just be like water off a duck's back. Stage three is become a teacher for others. Now you don't wanna do this until you have mastered the first two steps. I've seen many a person try to be that do-gooder, reliable support system for other people, but if you're not actually up to that point yet, meaning you can't even support yourself and you're not stable emotionally yourself, then this is going to burn you out. It's not going to do any good for the people that you're trying to help, and it's certainly not going to give any, do any good for you. So don't do this until you have really developed those first two steps, you've taken responsibility for your life, and you've built a solid and impenetrable force field. True purpose and growth lies in giving to others. This might sound like a bit of philosophical talk here because it is, but when you really get down to it and you listen to people who are successful and who are happy, this is what they talk about. When you are strong enough to take responsibility for yourself, then you can look to helping take responsibility for your family. Then after your family, you'll look to take your responsibility for your community and after that for an ever greater number of people. And as you teach others, you yourself will continue to grow. So when someone comes to you and talks about how they're feeling down about what these people are saying or how they're trying to make them feel crap, that will remind you that, hey, we can't let other people feel that way and I can't let myself feel like that. So as you grow, greater opportunities and challenges and continued growth will become available to you. And learning to step outside of yourself will also take your focus off your own problems and onto other greater issues that will ultimately teach you perspective about your own life. That once again just leads back to you becoming a stronger person, able of, capable of supporting yourself and of eventually supporting others. So guys, your action steps for finishing this video and this lesson is to one, take complete responsibility for yourself and for your life. Whatever position you're in right now is your responsibility and no one else's. Number two is you want to build your own impenetrable force field around yourself so that you only let the good in and you get rid of the bad. And number three is you want to become a teacher for others because true growth lies in helping other people. That's it for today. Feel free to get in touch with me at any time and let me know what you would like to learn about next. I would love to make a video about it.